Okay, so in this video, we're going to be talking about histograms. Um, we're just going to be describing how to interpret them, what they mean, um, and also the data that they provide. So the first thing we're going to be talking about is uh, categorical data. So what do you think categorical data means? Well, as the name implies, it's things that can be broken up into categories. Um, another, th another way you could write that is that categorical data is data that can't be measured. And some examples of this are, what is your hair color? Or favorite pizza? These are things that aren't necessarily numbers, but more so categories. Um, and what do you think quantitative data is? Oh, well, quantitative data is the opposite. It's data that can be measured. And some examples of this are age, uh, height, weight, income, etc. These are things that can be numbered and measured. And what do you think univariate means? Well, the prefix uni means one. So univariate means there is one variable. An example of this is uh, height. If you're measuring just height of students, it would be univariate. Um, what do you think bivariate means? Bi means two, so two variables. An example of this would be as if you're measuring height and weight. Okay. Number five says, does the histogram illustrate univariate data or bivariate, categorical or quantitative? So how many variables are we looking at? Well, we're looking at um, the semester average over the number of participants. So we're just looking at our only data point is uh, semester average. So it's going to be univariate. And we're looking at grade averages, right? So 65 to 95. So this is going to be quantitative. Um, would you describe the histogram as symmetric? Why or why not? Um, well, it's not very too, it's not too far off of symmetric, but it's not perfect. You can see this graph down here is not symmetric at all. It's very high on the left side and very low on the right side. This one, its peak is fairly close to the center, but it's not exact. So we're going to say, is it symmetric? We can say fairly, but not exact. Um, number seven says, describe the distribution of grades for this class and justify any estimates you make. So if I'm trying to find the average right here, I want to look at the bars in each of the, or each of the bars in the histogram. So from 65, we have two for this bar. We have seven for this bar. We have nine for this bar. We have three. So if I were to try to find the average, I can say two times 65 plus seven times 75 plus nine times 85 plus three times 95. And in total, I have uh, 21 participants. And if I were to put this in my calculator, my average would be 81.2. Um, the next one, it says, use the following histogram to answer questions eight and nine. Consider the new histogram showing bus ridership at a local high school. This histogram is not symmetric. It is skewed to the right. You know this because the distribution has a tail out toward the right side. So like we were saying, this one has a lot of data to the left, tail going to the right. So it's skewed right. Um, what is happening with the population that causes the distribution to be skewed right? So we're looking at students who ride the bus, right? At age 14, 
we have almost 900 students, but at age 18, we only have about 100. So just think, in real life, what happens as you get older? You get your license, right? And as you get your license, you start driving more. So what we're thinking is that as the students get older, uh, they get their license and drive themselves to school. Now, estimate the average of students who ride the bus. This average is the center of the distribution. Justify your estimate. And so when we justify, our work is going to be our justification. So if we look at 14, and this is going to be an eyeball estimate because we're just looking at a graph. So it's not quite 100, or excuse me, 900. So I'm going to say 14 times about 880 plus 15 times, it looks like it's about... Um, 700, this bar is at about 330, this bar is at about 180, and this bar is not quite 100, I'm going to say about 90. So, and again, these numbers are just estimates because we just have a graph to go off of. So I'm going to have 14 times 880 plus 15 times 700 plus 16 times 330 plus 17 times 180 plus 18 times 90. And if I were divided by the total number of students, we have about 2,180, and that equals 15.04 years. So about 15 years old is the average student who rides a bus. Now it says, suppose the histogram of bus ridership looked like this instead. Data values that are distant from most of the other values are generally thought of as outliers. How, what may have happened? Does this data distribution affect your answers to questions eight and nine? So instead of uh, the graph that we had to start right here, we've got this graph right here. And it's asking us what's going on here. Well, this was, looks like it used to be the original graph, but now we've got a data point all the way down here at 10. And this is high school students who ride the bus. So there's either got to be something wrong, okay? Because a 10 year old should not be riding a high school bus, right? So there either should be something wrong with the data or there's just a really smart kid going to high school. Um, so we can say there was either an error uh, in the data or there is a really smart 10 year old going to high school. And then number 11, both graphs show exactly the same data. Why is one misleading? So we've got two graphs. Both are showing the same exact data. But if you look, the only difference between them is the y-axis. So the y-axis is showing the days of freezing temps. Um, and one of them starts at 81 and goes to 85. The other one starts at 20 and goes to 100. And because of that, the data is different. So 2007, there were 82 days. 2008, there were 84. The one on the right shows the same exact data. This one goes to 82, this one goes to 84. But because the spread on the y-axis is so much uh, larger on the one on the right, it goes from 20 to 100, um, these bars are much closer together than the ones on the left. So choosing the values on, the, on your axis is very important when you're doing a graph. So we can say the values 
uh, on the y-axis that represent the number of days of freezing temps during the 2007 and 2008. Because those are different, one of these graphs is a little bit more misleading than the other.